Hello and welcome to this short course on practical machine learning for beginners. We'll be using a use case to help everyone to understand how machine learning actually works. And this is more or less a car pricing solution. But first, we have you know gotten to know that the major knowledge gap is not just how to build the model. You know, after the model is built in your notebook or your Visual Studio code, what then do you do with it? So this course aims to deliver an end-to-end -end, uh, understanding. Just open up your mind to how data science or machine learning really is. Okay, what does it take me to build a model? What does it take me to deploy? How do people consume it? And how do the business see value in this solution, monitor, track, and improve? This is something that a lot of machine learning enthusiasts you know, do not understand. They know as well how to build a model, maybe how to build it and submitting on cargo, maybe, you know, that's for competitive data science. But taking it from that notebook to reproduction seems to be a challenge. So this course is addressing that. We are not focusing on how to get the best model to win competition, but rather, what does it take to have a model into deployment? So I'll be doing this alongside with Ahmed Adegule, who is a seasoned data scientist and a Microsoft certified trainer. He has actually delivered value through the entire life cycle of model deployment, uh, development to deployment. And myself, um, I've been in this space for years now, and then I've, I've been certified by Microsoft, um, an MVP in business applications, and of course, we will continue to learn together as we go in this track. Let us look at what we will cover in this course. First, use case description. So we have to start from use case. What is the challenge? What do you want to address? So, you know, as little as it is, and we expect you whenever you're taking up a data science project for yourself, you start from there. Define a particular use case, then you know, exploratory data analysis, where, which means you are going to explore your data to know it better. You can just run to build model, you have to know, no matter how little it is, you should know your data. Then you do data pre-processing and model because you understand this data well and you understand the business through the data. You then have to you know pre-process the data, generate new columns, feature engineering before you model your data. But after you model a notebook or whatever tools you are using, is that all? No. So this is where you learn more about Flask framework. We hope to take you to a new level of learning, including Docker and the rest. But let's start little. Flask framework. We have many other framework. We have Django, we have Streamlist and the rest. But how about Flask framework? Because it's also common. You know, and how do we use it to deploy our model? So we understand Flask, Flask framework, then model deployment. Let's go to the background of this uh, use case, which is the car pricing. Why are we coming up with this or what is the business scenario like? Okay, so the background is that Capacity Nigeria is a fictitious company, but actually it exists because it's been managed by me. Um, it's a car listing platform, but this is not the business of Capacity Nigeria, so let's get this right. Uh, it is a car listing platform and have over 1 million customers. And from the site analytic data, they observe actually that customers do search. And what they're searching is not just to buy a car, they search for different price ranges, they fit out by prices, which shows that these guys are trying to understand how much with their car worth or something like that. So they're looking for a way to better serve these customers by making car price feature a product on the site. So when you get to the site, you can say, check your car value. So that way people want to, oh, let me check it. And that will save them all the stress of serving or maybe more or less going through and featuring to all those cars every time and they're looking for a better way to to do this and um so that way it can afford vendors to even have access to this product and service as well all right so what do the data science team or what are we tasked to do which we want to deliver in the course of this um, training first we have to build an optimized car pricing solution and add it as a feature on the site so the solution will be driven by machine learning, so meaning it's more dynamic, it's not, it's not just picking data from the database and pushing the value forward, no. And then it determines the expected car price in the market. So if there's inflation, because more cars are being listed, so because you bought your car for maybe 1.4 million naira, does not mean when you are selling that same car today, if you buy it last year, if you are selling that same car today, you can even sell it higher. 
because inflation is actually in the market. So the model should be able to adapt to all those things. Will our model be able to do all these things? Maybe not totally right because we are not after engineering a best possible model but we want to rather show you okay let's do this quickly learn this and whatever project you've done in the past you can go back to them and take them beyond just leaving them in the notebook okay so what will be the benefit so when you are doing things like this even though it's fictitious you should be able to wrap your head around what how will this benefit the business so even for yourself your personal project like this case now, customer will trust our car listing for better pricing. They believe these guys you know, truly knows them, understand what they need. And also, the we're going to make an API available from this same model. So give it to vendors and the rest. It's going to attract many customers to the web app, you know, because how they understand that these guys are even giving all this thing for free. It's just like a book FS then, you know, hopefully, I, I'm not sure the API is for free, but either you are making it for free or you are even, you know, commercializing that API what is there is that you're able to give people access you're able to serve people the more and that is a service although uh, more so rather more data have been gathered and this data because people are now using the tool you get to know more and it's going to improve your business performance you're going to understand more about the customer dynamics based on the way they interact with your website and your product how do we approach to do this so these are the basic steps we don't want to rush through this and we don't want to remake it too core because it's about showing you the concept to deployment and not the entire life cycle we have a lot of things in plan that will now be dealing with all these things or expand on this knowledge first these timelines are fictitious so but you know you have to do data gathering decide on business values and resource requirements you do evaluation you know can we prioritize is the value higher than the effort you know all those kind of thing um design solution architecture including components and dependency you will need you have to design the interface wireframe how will it look like both the api and ui ux you have to gather external data either internal or external data point that you will use the model training and deployment the, this is where you, once you have concluded on the preliminary exercise which is data gathering and assessment you then and you know do the rapid processing validation model your data attend to explainability then in terms of solution access you have decided okay your solution will be assessed via user interface and api what is the timeline that you have uh, will they be able to consume this thing at the same time or the platform will be available first then the api any plan to test them or maybe a pre-release before it's generally available this is where you conclude on a make timeline for this and lastly of course the deployment of this solution infrastructure provisioning model wrapping with flask you know docker image generation in case you want to who might not touch that in this first episode but we're going to definitely touch this as we have to discuss deployment on the provisioned server as well right. so assuming because i'm using my system for this solution we would definitely talk about hosting your solution even on the website actually using cpanel we will teach that using docker we're going to teach that but uh, you do your solution architecture uh, for the solution you have on ground. So for the one we're going to touch here is more or less this is it. This is my local machine. If you can even draw something like this for yourself, it helps it improve the value of your project and portfolio because you understand. The day you are taking it outside your local machine, you do the architecture as well, which we're going to teach you and show you how, how that works. Because I'm deploying this solution on my local machine, um, so basically this is how it looks like. My users will be able to consume it on my browser. There are, uh, um, the only missing point here is where is the engine running? The engine is running within my local service and the user on my system will be able to consume it on my system. So solution will be deployed as a Flask web app and API and can be consumed on this local machine more or less. But of course there are many ways I can still break this down to show within my system. Is there any place where the server is running actually? There's, it's just my system. This is why we encapsulate everything within my local machine. And this is the wireframe. We'll just come up with something little, not really user friendly, like that, like that, but something to see. And we know you are not a web programmer, you know. Um, so we're just going to show you something that we will also do this together. And this is just more or less the wireframe, but I want to show you the exact solution so that you see how it looks like. Okay, right now I'm on my local machine and this is the solution. So let's test it and see what year is my car. Let's just put 2009. Any year, uh, this car has gone many miles in Nigeria. And um, the kilometer driven, you know, car price rather. What price did you buy the car? Um, let's just say maybe $2,500. 
kilometers driven uh, this car has gone distance uh, previous owner will clarify this just more or less are you the direct owner or maybe second hand or all those kind of thing let's just put um one we will make this more explanatory later um, is it petrol diesel or cng just put petrol dealer i'm an individual and um, my car actually is not manual it is automatic so i have this here then the next is uh, selling price what will be the selling price of this car that i bought to um, um 2500 years ago? wow so i can even sell more than that because i mean in this market cars are, car prices are not very high but when i bought mine it was 2500 years ago. yeah go wow that's interesting meaning i can sell this car for 2800 I mean, and this is how users will be so happy to see their cars you can create other functions around this maybe give them the um, lower brand the higher high brand and the rest but come on it's about knowing how this thing is done so the moment you know how it's done how it's been done your curiosity is set up you can then you know go the length and the white of different ideas you have now and fit them together you know to, to improve on this now this is just for the ui um the user interface when people are interacting how about the api you're going to learn as well how this is being consumed via api so i'm going to run it on my local machine again and show you in postman how we can consume this solution by api all right i'm now in postman is an application for testing apis I know you are not technical but this will help you and get you familiar with all these tools you know those are the knowledge and tools that are missing from that from your knowledge gap you know because you do not even know how this is possible and if you know it already awesome but seeing how it's being used now you know to even test the api you are deploying via your machine learning solution local host port 5000 because it's on my local machine that's why i'm just using local host and when i click on send just to send the request you see right here welcome to car pricing solution api okay so i want to make a prediction so i'm just going to come here and slash i mean push slash forward slash predict so because that is where my prediction is in my code that's under that route then i have to put the key values on that parameter what are the values and instead of me you know just typing them one by one there are several parameters there i i just have to click on block edit and which i have them already so i'm going to paste so this is the year 2009, like what we did before, 2,500. Um, this is 90,000 uh, kilometer driven. Hona, one, you know, diesel. These are the things we selected. You know, they are now being passed as number at the back end. Um, I'm okay with the key value here now. And when I run this, you can see it has changed this now to a couple of codes. Instead of us writing those codes, um, it has, we have it now by just pasting the parameters and the value. So when I click on send, you see, you can sell your car for $2,800, $2,808.92. That's fantastic. You know, this is what people get when they call the API. And by passing this parameter, so this particular yeah, full code down, the moment they make the call, it returns this whole thing. They can then extract the value because that is what they need and fit it into their own application. As you can see, it's a lot for us to learn. And this is value. I believe this will plug together your learning experience. Uh, like I said, this first part of this video will cover this end to end. Uh, the other part will now include how do we use Docker now to extend this solution to people that are not even within my local system. How do I host it? Even like we have a website that we see panel and the cPanel runs Python. How can I host this same application there? We will show you this. Now that you have seen what you will learn at the end of this course. I want to enjoy you to subscribe and uh, make sure you put on your notification. We'll be releasing this in a, you know on more or less on a daily basis till the end of you know this um, coming week, and of course so that more people can get to reach this uh, resource and that might answer their questions and their quest to learn data analysis, data science, or machine learning even in 2021. Thank you and see you in the next video.